Hey, um, this is Stacia, and I am now going to show you my round two game from Parma on, I think it was March 29th of 2022. Um, and after a very nice um, win in round one, I was feeling uh, hopeful. <laughs> so I entered this game um, in a positive mood. And, <clears throat> well, let's see what we can learn from this one. So my opponent is Mike Kroski, and he played one E4. So I went E5, and he went F4. So this is the King's Gambit. And um, I love this opening as white and black. So I like to take the pawn, and after knight to F3, which is what he played, um, I went d5. So this is the modern defense against the king's gambit, recommended by I am Calvin Blocker. So I like this. And white should probably take that pawn, and he did. And then I played knight to f6. I mean, notice that if you take with a queen, I mean, you're kind of helping white develop a tempo i'm not even sure if they would do it right away let's see what the engine says um yeah if you take this way knight c3 yeah makes sense i guess we could check the king but who really cares <laughs> you know um knight c6 wow this position's kind of equal which is kind of fascinating to me Kind of makes me want to try taking with a queen sometime. <laughs> but okay. Um, knight to f6 I think is a better move because we're developing our king side. We want to castle, you know, ASAP. We're playing against the king's gambit here. All right. So my opponent played knight to c3, which I wasn't sure if this was theory or not. I really wasn't sure. Um because it's kind of a weird move. Um, in my estimations, the most testing lines for black are the ones where white gets in like D4, C4, and they get this like pawn mass in the center. And then it's tough to develop my queen side, especially this knight. And um, I've been crushed by that pawn mass before. Mm -hmm. So I usually fear it. <clears throat> so knight C3, I was kind of happy to see it. I'm like, well, I don't necessarily have to worry about c4 coming showing up anytime soon um so i played the move bishop d6 now <clears throat> i'm pretty sure i could take as well and after takes and queen takes <clears throat> now the queen's just simply good i mean the the queen is centralized there's no knight c3 attacking my queen i guess there could be c4 Let's see what the engine says about that the engine's not a huge fan of c4 it's kind of saying like just go queen a5 or queen d6 and black is better which is kind of what i think too trading off pieces also isn't all that desirable for white so after knight takes d5 i actually think white should do something different um in fact i'm pretty sure huh no i'm wrong knight takes d5 is the top move in theory but it scores well for black bishop c4 is scores a little better for white but it's a sideline okay interesting but in the game let me turn off the engine and stuff. Okay. Bishop d6. <laughs> I mean, I used to play the king's gambit. And I still do occasionally, but I used to be annoyed by this move. You know, the bishop is guarding that pawn. I mean, white wants to play d4 and bishop takes f4. And they'll, they'll enjoy a very nice position at that point. But if black stubbornly holds on to this pawn white needs to figure out how to win it if they don't then this bishop's kind of sad so that was the idea okay so he went bishop e2 oops 
No. <laughs> okay, wait, am I back? Okay, sorry, I clicked the wrong thing and I got scared. Okay, bishop e2, I castled. And he castled. <clears throat> and I went rook e8. Let's put that rook on an open file. h3 he played. Hmm, not sure about h3. That doesn't... I'm not sure what he was trying to do with this move. Um, maybe he's trying to provoke knight h5. I don't know, but I feel like when the pawn comes to h3 like this in the king's gambit, this plan becomes possible. You know, and I don't think white wants to see that happen. Um, but also, like, what does that do? It doesn't do much. I mean, if I was white, I would want to play d4. It makes way more sense. Let's see what the engine says. Engine says d4. Yay. h3 is the third move. Oh, it just dropped off. <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> see, I think that's the way you should use the engine. Come up with a conclusion and then check it. See if you're right. Okay, so h3. I thought it wasn't so good, and it turns out I was right. Um, yeah, c6. I don't think this is the most precise move, but I think it's an interesting one because I'm a, I'm a more a gambit player, right? So I love this, and this is what happened in the game. And it is kind of like annoying, you know, because when the pawn comes up, it's actually attacking white's center pawn. So they need to do something about that. So he took, but now I have more center control and I got extra development out of that. So it's kind of like a, it's like white gambited their F pawn and I'm holding on to it. But then I decided to gambit a different pawn. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? The more messy, the better. That's what I think. Um, D4. I think that's a good move. Bishop F5. So is that the right move here? Bishop F5. I mean, I want to develop. And it's a rapid game. So I probably didn't give this move much thought. Let's see what the engine wants, though. Yeah, the engine wants some different moves here. It wants H6. A6. And also bishop c7. Wow. I would not consider that move. That's pretty interesting. Bishop c7. Hmm. But it likes h6 the best. Now, I can only imagine that the engine knows that we want to play g5. And we can't really play g5 right now because a knight would take it. <laughs> but I have... <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick. <coughs> well, I'm actually not sick anymore. I just have like lingering congestion. But Okay. My experience in this King's Gambit is that white wants to open up their rook on f f4. So they're, they're going to try to play knight e5 at some moment. The rook will open up and the bishop will be on it. At that moment, I can play g5. It's no longer attacked by the knight on f3. So I stopped playing this move h6 because I realized I could play g5 um, without that move. But now I'm starting to also realize that maybe a deeper idea is to play h6 because I'm going to need to later just to maintain the pawn on g5. So um, am I right? I have no clue, but that's what I'm thinking about it. So let's see what happened. All right, so bishop f5. I mean, how bad can this be? My bishop's pretty awesome. You know, I like it. I can go here. I, I was actually going to play h6 next, maybe. Um. Oh, yeah, actually, I wanted to go g5 and then put the bishop on g6 behind the pawn. I thought that would be cool. <laughs> but anyway, um, he challenged my bishop. So, hmm. <coughs> Let's see, I could take um, 
I don't think taking's the worst thing ever, but I could also go queen d7 and say, go ahead and take me, help my queen. Um, wow. Okay, I like my move in the game better. <laughs> I forgot I played that. Um, yeah, I actually like this move a lot because... My knight's coming to the center, and I think white was intending, they really wanted to trade that off. Well, guess what? You can't trade that off now. And, you know, this is the idea. And it's a little scary, right? A little scary. And I was thinking, now my queen's open too. So I was actually thinking about putting my queen on f6, where it would, def whoops, defend my bishop and... Spoiler alert, close your eyes. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, I'm probably analyzing a little too much, but I love chess. What can I say? So 90, 94, let's see if that's a good move or not, though. Actually, it's not. Wow. The engine really likes bishop g6 immediately, and it also likes taking. <coughs> wow, I'm surprised by this move because... Um, I want to go g5 and I just blocked it. I guess they're saying if if they want to trade, we'll take with an h-pawn. Wow. Actually, this doesn't... Now I have two g-pawns. <laughs> I guess that's the point. Um, this looks weird to me, though, to play like this. But uh, all right, it's a computer engine. What do you want? Um, yeah, I got pretty ambitious in this part of the game. Okay, engine off. Actually, that's a mistake. 94 is a mistake. Ooh, okay, let's find out why. Um, oh, okay, I kind of see why, but I'm turning off the engine. Um, I think white can trade everything off. I saw this during the game. White can trade everything off and have a better position. So... So what are we talking about here? If knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes. You know what? Knight g5, I think it is the reason that would attack the rook on e4, but also open up this rook on f4. So that doesn't look so good for me. I'm going to lose my f-pawn, right? I think that's what's happening. Okay, let's let's look at the engine and see if that's true. Takes. Takes. Yep, this is all correct. Actually, it's queen d3. Okay, wow. Um, my move... Oh, my move loses. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am sipping wine. I probably shouldn't do that. <clears throat> okay are you listening kids wine makes you bad at chess never drink alcohol <laughs> queen d3 is the uh, move attacking the rook i saw this during the game i remember this i was planning queen e7 and then the engine says knight g5 Oh, okay, I missed this. If I take the knight now, my rook's hanging. So I actually can't do that. Um, yeah, and now my rook's trapped, isn't it? <laughs> it feels like my rook's trapped. Actually, I have this move, right? Can I do this? No, no, there's... Yeah, that's like mate, even... So, wow. So my rook is pinned and attacked. That can't be good. I have to play this way. That's the best I have. So I'm losing the exchange there. I don't, you know, that's not what I was dreaming of. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, luckily my opponent didn't find that um, resource. I mean, you know, you have to calculate that here. 
I mean, I would have had to calculate that before knight e4. It's hard to see, isn't it? It's a little hard to see. I did look at most of this, though. Takes, 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 rook here. I saw knight g5, but I did not see queen d3. Queen d3, queen d7, knight g5. No, I did not see that. And then the queen on d3 and the knight on g5 are threatening mate. <laughs> so my rook is pent. Wow. Yeah, that's hard to see for me. I'm not that good. <coughs> so knight e4. But my opponent wasn't that good either. Yay. <laughs> knight e2. I, you know, I was, I saw knight e2 and, you know, they call it intuition, right? Like, I'll get an emotion it, a, when moves like this happen. And I'll be like, oh, that can't be right. Like, that's not right. Like, something inside me knows that move is wrong. And it turns out the engine is saying, yeah, it's, it's a mistake. Okay. I mean, it's, this is a king's gambit. You cannot play a king's gambit like this. But I get what he's trying to do. He's really, like, set on collecting that. But here's the thing. G5. <laughs> I'm holding on to my pawn. <laughs> yeah. So I did play that, and it was a top move. I got to turn the engine off, though. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay, so c3 was played. Um, just solidifying the center, I went queen f6, and he went queen c2. So I think he wants to pin this knight, you know, because now if I move that knight, White could take on f5 and win a piece. So I can't do that. But I do like um, this idea I found next. I played rook a to c8. Any idea why I played that? Well, I want to play knight b4. I think that would be a nice move. And the rook is pinning that pawn. So that looks pretty nice to me. But he saw it. So he played a3. Now, I really thought about playing a5 here. Or wait, a5 or let's see. Yeah, a5. Because now I have the threat. That threat is still there. Let's see what the engine says about that. I didn't play it in the game, but I was really, really tempted. It does say a3 is the best move. And then it says b5 for me. Ooh, okay, I'm turning off the engine. B5. Oops. No, I want this. B5. B5, offering a pawn. So what are we doing here? I think I know. With the bishop not there, we now have discoveries, right? So um, it's hard to argue with knight, G set, knight G3, I mean. Knight g3 wins material, does it not? Let's see what the engine says. Yep, knight g3. Yeah, so the idea was this. I'm on the rook. I'm on the queen. And if he comes back, we take. Then we take the rook. So that's pretty good. Okay, so. Um, but in the game after a3, I decided to go with this move, which I actually don't like. I didn't like it during the game either. I was like, what? Why did I do this? I don't like it. Um, can't even remember my idea with this. Oh, I actually think I was planning that move. Takes, takes, queen in. I was like, well, if I jump my knight in and he takes and I take with a pawn, then he's going to like get mated on h2. So that's why I played that move. So let's see what he did. Um, he went knight h2. Okay. See, I like this. See, this is not how a king's gambit is supposed to go for white. White is supposed to capture this. And white is supposed to have a big attack on black. But the tables have turned because I'm a crazy attacking player myself. And, um, if you, and I'm a KG player myself. So if you don't play the KG right... 
I'm going to try to punish you, and that's what's happening in this game, so I'm pretty happy with, with everything so far. Okay, I wasn't sure what to do from here, so I went queen g6 because... Well, I'm not going to sack there now, I don't think. And I was a little worried about the knight coming in with tempo. <coughs> Though I'm not sure I should be worried. I actually don't remember my real reason. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but after queen g6, my opponent played a surprising move. He played bishop takes f4. That looks like a sacrifice because it's a sacrifice. Um, okay, the question... You know, when you face a sacrifice during a game, though, the question is, can you take it? Can you take it? My intuition told me that I can take that. But let's calculate a little bit and make sure, right? What's his idea with this move? Well, when the bishop takes my pawn, these squares become more available, at least for now. Um, if we take back with this pawn... My queen is opened up. So got to make sure no rooks are coming there. <laughs> but there is none. So I'm okay with that. Like if I take and he goes rook there, I have time. You know, I can go king h8 or something. So I'm not getting killed by that. Um, if we take with a bishop, and he takes, and we take, I mean... I guess he's winning a pawn there, but that's a whole piece that was sacrificed. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> In the game, I did not see any reason not to take it. And I took it rather quickly. I actually, I think I've played a move similar to this myself. And I, I call this a sacrifice out of frustration. He's like, my bishop can't move. This is terrible. Like, what am I supposed to do with my bishop? Even if he does this, you know, like, that bishop's no good. I mean, it's just no good no matter what. So he actually decided to take, and I just think it's a blunder. And it is a blunder. Okay, because I'm checking with the engine. So I took it, and he played knight takes f4. Now that attacks my queen, but I saw it. So now I played a sneaky move, queen g5. I love moves where you can move your queen one square, but it makes like a lot of difference. And in this case, I'm now on that knight twice. It's only attacked once. So he's going to have to do something about that. He could also capture, which is what he decided to do. So I took, and he played queen to f2. So, okay. Wow. I just realized something. So am I threatening bishop takes knight? Because bishop takes knight, if the queen takes, we play queen takes g2 checkmate. So there must be some way out of that though, right? Um, like if I take here, Gosh, I don't know. What would he do? <coughs> okay, let's try it. Um, actually, this is winning. Yeah, it is winning. Yeah, you, he can't do that. That's checkmate. So the computer gives knight to g4. Um... Okay, I'm I'm really tempted to play h5 or f5, like just attack that that knight. Let's say I go h5. Um, then it gives this, but okay, I'll trade and take the knight. I'm up two pieces. Okay, even I can win that. 
So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, so it was going on. Um, okay, so I went here. He went takes, takes, queen of two. I really wish I would have took the knight. But I didn't take the knight. I played knight e5. Oh, I made a note in my analysis. I said I was being devious here. Oh, I was being devious. Um, because it looks like I'm giving away my knight. But actually, my idea was bishop c5. So, because I like winning queens, so I tried that. <laughs> but also, my knight had no way into the game, you know? My knight's like... Like, my knight couldn't get in the game. I don't think this is so good. Like, it's a little slow. So, I, I liked that. I could do this. But I actually mess up here, I think, soon. And I actually think I should take first. The computer is giving knight takes d4. Wow. Wow, a better version of what I, what I was doing. But wait, is it he could take with a pawn? I mean, they're saying if this, we go here. That I understand. But what if they take with a pawn, though? Well, then we go rook c2. Ooh. Check out that geometry. <laughs> G2. It's all about G2. Okay. Wow. I wish I would have found that move. That is a really cool move. Um, but in the game, knight e5, which is interesting at least. He went there. And I went knight d3. Okay, so I was low on time at this point. And I thought knight d3 should be fine. But then I have to admit, I had a sinking feeling in my stomach, like maybe it wasn't wasn't a good move. Turns out that sinking feeling was correct. This is actually a blunder. But why? Let's see. He did take in the game. And I took back. Oh my god. I wonder if this is the real position. I'm not sure if this is the real position because I was focused on F7. I knew about F7. Oh. Yeah. Turns out that, um, yeah, after knight e5, I didn't record any more moves. Yeah, because of time pressure. Sorry, you guys. But, like, something like this happened, but F7 was not hanging, though. I remember I had F6 in. I think it was F6. Or Bishop G6. Which one? Yeah, something like this happened. Except I had F7 covered. So I don't know what move he he made that. Might have been this, actually. Something like that. But I did end up winning because I'm a piece up. And um, it did go into an endgame, but I managed to just trade down. <coughs> and I had a bishop against these pawns and the bishop won so and he offered me a draw and even though it looked a little scary and I had no time I refused the draw I'm stubborn like that so um but I'm glad now that I did that because I actually did end up winning so, so there we go so wins in round one and two and I'll be back with game three so I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll be back with more chess okay bye